Dodrine. Let us talk about its pharmacology, AIM, Therapeutics Application and Safe Profile. Midodrine is an alpha adrenergic agonist. It means it stimulates the receptor for its action. It taken orally in an inactive form, which means it is a prodrug. It is clinically used to treat orthostatic hypotension. The most common used brand names for midodrine are Orvatin and Proamatine. Let's indulge into the history of midodrine. It was approved in 1996 for the purpose of treating the patients with low blood pressure, specifically the condition of orthostatic hypotension. FDA shows its concerns as FDA was unable to prove its clinical benefits. So FDA limited access in patients while advising patient to consult doctor. Talking about the clinical use of midodrine. Midodrine stands tall against orthostatic hypotension. It is the condition marked by the sudden drop in blood pressure when a person moves from lying down to standing position. It is the systolic drop of 20 millimeters and diastolic drop of 10 millimeters. This causes dizziness and condition prolongs for one to three minutes. When a person stands, the blood flow suddenly increases towards the legs due to gravity that lowers the cardiac output. Stroke volume of heart, so it activates baroreceptors and start to pumps the blood towards heart. This lowers the blood supply to brain that causes dizziness. Let's move to the pharmacokinetics of the drug. Starting with absorption, midodrine shows rapid absorption via gastrointestinal tract. That is why it is given as prodrug, because its active metabolite deglumidodrine shows poor absorption via GIT. Its onset of action is quite rapid, which is one hour, whereas duration of action seen is two to three hours. Talking about the protein binding, which is very minimal in some research papers, it is seen that it is less than 30%. That is what shows its connectivity that it shows rapid action because most of it occurs in free form. Talking about the bioavailability of deglumidodrine, because after absorption, it will pass first pass effect, where in liver, it will be converted to its active metabolite. It's shown 93% bioavailability. The half-life of midodrine is 30 minutes and of deglumidodrine, it is three to four hours. Here is another reason why midodrine is given as product B because of its short half-life. Time where midodrine and deglumidodrine shows peak serums level are 30 mens and 1 to 2 hours, respectively. Talking about it, dose the safe window for admin citrating drug. As a result of several experimental trials is 30 mg per day. Exceeding the dose can result in toxicity and adverse effects. Moving on to its distribution, it is seen that it doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. That is why it does not affect the brain mainly. Crossing blood-brain barrier totally depends upon the drug's lipophilicity. The volume of distribution of deglumidodrine is marked as 4.6 liter per kilogram. After being absorbed, midodrine is majorly metabolized in liver into its active metabolite deglumidodrine by the removal of glycine. This is either the enzymatic hydrolysis or deglycination. Midodrine is primarily excreted via URN where 80% of the dose is eliminated through renal excretion nodge and a small fraction, almost 1-2%, to 2 is excreted via feces. Let's dive into pharmacodynamics of, of midodrine. As previously discussed, it is a prodrug. So it is determined that after absorption before performing its action, it has to be converted into its active form. It is activated by deglycination, that means removal of glycine from midodrine. This is an enzymatic hydrolysis, which means midodrine is breakdown in the presence of water into degli midrine and glycine, an amino acid. The enzymes involved are still unknown. Now the deglumidodrine is an active metabolite that bind and stimulate alpha-1 agonist for its action. That's the reaction where midodrine is hydrolyzed to deglumidodrine and glycine here. ST-1059 is the name given to deglumidodrine by the pharmaceutical companies during manufacturing. Now looking up to the cellular mechanism where deglumidodrine, its active metabolite, is responsible for the stimulation of receptor. Deglumidodrine has binding affinity specifically with alpha-1 receptors in the peripheral blood vessels mainly. Alpha-1 receptor is a G-protein coupled receptor when deglumidodrine binds alpha subunit moves to phosphatidyl inositol 4 5 bisphosphate that is PIP. It activates phospholipase C mechanism that converts phospholipase into diacylglycerol and inositol phosphate 3. 
These are second messages. Diacylglycerol in retiron activate inactive phosphokinase C present in cytoplasm that amplify the signaling of receptor by phosphorylating the target. Secondly, inositol phosphate 3 binds to the IP3 receptor present in the endoplasmic reticulum. This causes the release of calcium ion that are responsible for the contraction of smooth muscles resulting in vasoconstriction, ultimately increases blood pressure. Now discussing about the side effects, common side effects include sudden changes in blood pressure causes, reduces the cerebral flow temporarily resulting in dizziness, chills, and shivering. Diglimidodrine has affinity with alpha-1 receptors causing piloerector motion in peripheries, resulting in numbness, tingling, or goosebumps and itchy scalp. Sphincters in urinary bladder remains contracted tat result in retention of urine. Contraindications of midodrine, that is, it should be avoided in following conditions. It should be severally contraindicated in heart diseases like myocardial infarction because high BP will worsen the condition. Moreover, its major metabolism occurs in liver, so its use must be avoided in the condition of cirrhosis. As previously discussed, tat major excretion of the drug occurs the through kidney, so it should also be avoided in condition like kidney failure. Furthermore, it can excavate the symptoms of thyrotoxicity due to its extremely sympathetic activity. Toxicity. The dose for toxicity is not standardized. It totally depends upon the condition of patient. Some may develop at 350 and some may at 500 milligram. So clinically, it is advised to administer 30 milligram per day. Talking about advantages that why it is preferred over other somaphthomimetic agents. It is highly specific to alpha-1 adrenergic receptors and doesn't have any affinity with other receptors. Unlial other synapthon mimetic agents that has affinity to beta blockers too. It has minimized effect on CNS because it doesn't pass through blood-brain barrier. It crosses placental barrier, or not still unknown. So it's better to not give in pregnancy as its contraindication. Adverse effects are still unknown. Lastly, talking about an interesting fact that VIT should not he given after 6 p.m. because it will cause supine hypertension.